All right, so 3.6, uh, foundations of Math 30, uh, section 3.6, we're going to talk about the inverse and contrapositive of conditional statements. So last lesson in 3.5, we learned a lot about um, some of these definitions. Uh, you know, what a conditional statement was. Uh, the parts of a conditional statement, uh, you know, the conditional statement is if, then, and the hypothesis is right after the if, and the conclusion is right after the then. Uh, we talked about the truth of conditional statements and a truth table, and remember, we're going to use this today as well for this lesson, that if the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false, that's when the, state, the whole statement is false. Any other combination, the statement uh, still is a true statement. Okay, so as we introduce a couple more terms, let's take a look at what the inverse is. When you, when you talk about an inverse in math, um, maybe some of the things that you think of is, well, what I think of anyways, is if we're talking about uh, sine of x equals 0 0.5, then in order to solve for x here, and you guys have, I think, all been through this, in order to solve for x, we would have to take the sine to the negative 1 of both sides, okay? So this is the inverse. That's how you get x by itself. This sine to the negative 1 is the inverse, okay? And that's how we solve for x. And it's just a function on your calculator. And with the buttons on the calculator there, what you notice is that everything that is above these buttons, that, that would be sort of like the inverse operation. So x squared, well, we have square root. Sine, we have sine to the negative 1. So if I pop the calculator on here, let's just clear that up. And let's see, we have right radians, that's fine. So if I did second function sine of 0 0.5, I get 0 0.05 radians. And if I change that, some of you don't know about radians, I guess, but let's go to degrees. So if we change that, then we can do that same entry again and we'll get 2.86 degrees. Um, okay, so, anyways, uh, if we, oh, that's 0 0.05, that's why, that's something looked wrong here. Sine 0.5, sorry. And inverse sine 0.5. That's a okay, 30 degrees, that looks better. So, that's how we solve for x, it's the inverse function. So, how does that relate? Well, if we're talking about a statement, a conditional statement, and then we talk about the inverse of the statement, uh, that is formed by, the inverse is formed by negating both the hypothesis and the conclusion. Or, we're basically we're taking the opposite. That's what it is. So, this is sort of like the opposite operation, okay, in this case. And so, for an inverse, we're taking the opposite. Which means, here is the conditional statement. If a number is even, then it's divisible by 2. We talked about that last lesson. So the inverse is simply, um, if the number is not even, then it is not divisible by 2. So we're just, we're just putting the, uh, the word not uh, in front of the hypothesis and the conclusion. Okay? So this word not is pretty important. Kind of like the opposite. How can you tell it's first period here? It's hitting the wrong buttons here. But just like we want to find uh, x, if sine is 0 0.5, the, the, uh, the angle, so sine of 30 degrees is 0 0.5. Okay? So it's, it's the inverse there, inverse operation. The second thing we want to uh, note here, oh, I should, I should before I go, go on, what's the notation? Uh, for an inverse, we say... This is the little symbol for inverse, not P. So if not the hypothesis, then not Q. So it's just kind of a little, you'll see that in your, in your textbook there. I'll show you in a sec. That's what it looks like in your textbook right here in logic notation. The inverse, if P then Q, is written if not P then not Q. Okay. So then we move on to the second thing we want to learn about today is the contrapositive, okay, the contrapositive. So this is a little bit different. 
The contrapositive is a statement that's formed by negating both the hypothesis and the conclusion of the converse of a conditional statement. For example, if the statement is originally, if a number is even, then it's divisible by 2. The contrapositive is, if a number is not divisible by 2, then it's not even. So, for the converse, okay, we negate um, the hypothesis and the conclusion of the converse. That's for the contrapositive. So, what you want to remember there is it's Q first, and then P, and then it's not Q, not P. Okay? So we, we flip the hypothesis and conclusion, just like we do for the converse, and then we negate both of them. Alright? So, you can try to remember it like this, I guess, the con, right? Converse and con contrapositive. Alright, so the converse and contrapositive are, um, are related. I'm not sure why they didn't call it the contra-negative. <laughs> that would have helped. Converse, the negative of the converse, negate the converse. But anyways, they call it contrapositive. Alright, so we can get some practice taking basically any statement and uh, identifying all these. So why don't we do that? Okay, so we go through example two. We're going to take a conditional statement. And here's the conditional statement. If a number is a multiple of 10, then it is a multiple of 5. Okay. Well, first of all, is that true? Can we think of, let's think of a number, a number that's multiple of 10, like 20. Is that also a multiple of 5? Yes, it is. Can you think of a counterexample? Remember, one counterexample can prove it false. So is there a, an example you can think of that makes the statement untrue? If you did a little, no, the, the answer is no, um, you can't find a, um, a counterexample. So if you remember that truth table, the only thing that would negate the statement or, or falsify the statement is if you found a number where the hypothesis part is true, uh, that is a multiple of 10, and then it's not a multiple of 5. That's the only time it's untrue, which really is, you know, like finding a counterexample, right? So... This is a true statement. Okay, so write the contra positive. So we're going to have to flip multiple of 5, multiple of 10, and then we're going to have to negate them. We're going to have to flip and negate, okay? Flip and negate. So this is the conditional statement down here, and the contra positive if, is if a number is not, and what's the conclusion? A multiple of 5, then it is not a multiple of 10. Okay, so that's the contra positive. Flip and negate. And B says verify that the conditional and contrapositive statements are both true. Alright. Well, we did that with the original statement. And what about the uh, the contrapositive? Now, you don't have to do the algebra here. You don't have to. Uh, you can, uh, but you don't have to do the algebra to prove it. Uh, you can just uh, think of examples or say, that, you know, a counterexample uh, doesn't exist. I'm okay with that. Uh, if you just kind of think through this stuff logically. But let's see, this is what they did here. If n is a multiple of 10, then n is 10 times m, so some integer, right? 10m. If 10 is a factor of 10m, then n is divisible by 10, and also this same n value would have to be 5 times uh, 2m. Uh, so because 10m, okay, 5, 2m, see that? Since 5 is a factor of 5 times 2m, 5 is also a factor of n. So what they did was they split the 10 into 5 times 2, and then you said, hey, 5 is actually a factor. So they proved it that way. I'm not going to be too big on the um, algebraic proofs here for you, okay? But if you did a truth table as well, you know, you could, uh, you could see that there's no, there's no number uh, that's a counterexample. All right. Any questions here so far? It's basically just those two things. I think if you don't have any questions, what I'll do is I'll give you your assignment. I'll let you work through it. And if you have any questions kind of while you're going through your assignment, I'll maybe try and help you with those. Okay. So are we good? All right. So the two statements we learned today, these two statements, uh, the inverse <coughs> and the contrapositive. Remember your truth tables, and uh, here's your assignment.